everyone, I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. In today's game, we have a matchup of two of the best wide receivers in the AFC. It's A.J. Green going up against Jeremy Macklin. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Larry, thanks. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Inner Harbor and M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. The two teams emerging from their respective tunnels a minute ago to the approval of this Baltimore crowd. They're all set as their Ravens will match up with Andy Dalton and the Cincinnati Bengals. And hi again, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you take a look at our matchup here. You've got to believe that this is a game that might be won in the trenches. Oh, without question. This is big person on big person, big unit against big unit. Meet on me. Oh, you've got it all. Pick your cliche. But we know this. The ground's going to shake. Things are going to rumble. And they're going to have an impact on today's game. The All-Pro Justin Tucker set to do the honors, and we are underway now from Baltimore. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. <laughs> and in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. Here comes Andy Dalton ready to command the troops on offense. And for the Bengals, you know, they had made the playoffs five straight years under Andy Dalton. And last year they missed. And people were wondering, was that a one-year hiatus? Well, now they're limping towards a third-place finish in the AFC North. Yeah, unfortunately, it does not appear to have been an outlier. And they have a lot of decisions they have to make about a number of players. But let's go to Marvin Lewis, the head coach. Because under his tenure, they went to the playoffs seven times, which is admirable, which is really actually very impressive. Unfortunately, never won a playoff game. And that's the thing that people are going to remember most. And it's too bad because he really resurrected that Cincinnati Bengals franchise. Yeah, and he's the second longest tenured coach in the NFL. Rush coming, and he's taken down. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback, right in the face of him, puts him down. And now the offense will look to respond after the sack. Dalton throwing on second down. That's caught by his tight end, Uzama. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. The reception good for seven. It's third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. And they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. Dalton here from the gun. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. Now the left-footed punter in his ninth year, Kevin Huber on to kick. Back deep for the Ravens, Michael Campanero. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. Campanero on the return. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Ravens, they'll take over. The Ravens and Joe Flacco taking the field here on offense. And as you look forward for the Baltimore Ravens, 
Interesting to see what they will do with Joe Flacco. He's only had one 4,000-yard season in his tenure career, which was last year. He's going to fall short of that this season, but do they need to start thinking about having somebody else warming up in the bullpen? But we're talking about Joe Flacco also being 33 years old. Yeah. Had a big knee injury last season, so he had to come back and play this year. The answer would be yes. I mean, behind him right now is Ryan Mallett. If you're the Baltimore Ravens organization, you're checking free agency, you're going to check the draft, and you're going to bring in competition for Joe Flacco to start preparing to bridge that gap for that time when Joe Flacco no longer will be your starter. I don't think it's now. I think it'll be sooner rather than later. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. We saw him hit a big play there on a deep post. And most of the time, the post isn't available because you usually have defenders in the middle of the field. But if you throw enough curls and crossing routes and underneath routes, <laughs> I know from experience, they get tired of watching those balls get caught. They start to creep up a little bit, and that's when you can hit them big over the top. Fresh set of downs here. The first carry now for Alex Collins. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Collins, no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And this O line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. And on second and ten now. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Mike Wallace, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. And the Bengals starting defensive unit now. Let's talk about Vontez Burfitt, the versatile linebacker. You can play him inside, you can play him outside. Undrafted coming out of college, and that still fuels him. Gives him that huge chip on his shoulder. And when he's right and plays at his best, one of the best linebackers in the league. Just has to know where the line is so he doesn't go past it and cost his team some penalties. So now third and ten, a big play to start the drive, but nothing since. From the gun, Flacco. He'll drop it underneath for Woodhead. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first, thanks to a flashy little spin move. The Raven passing game getting in sync, another first down. Danny Woodhead only played in two games last season due to a knee injury. But when he comes out of the backfield on third down, that's usually gold. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. A red zone first down for Flacco. And he is out of bounds. Looks like right at the 15. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch. Especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds. Toe tapping. And of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Second down, Collins. And all the way down inside the five to the four. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. That O line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot. 
getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. And here comes play number six on this drive. Now a play fake here on first down. Looking sideline incomplete. He was looking for Nick Boyle that time. And that'll bring up second down. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he gets halfway home from the four down to the two-yard line. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? Something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something that develops slowly. It's got to be right at them if you're going to run the football. And if you're going to throw it, something quick, get it out of your hands in a hurry. On third and goal, Collins, and he will take it in for a Ravens touchdown. Alex Collins taking it in from two yards out, and the Ravens have taken the early lead. Able to punch it in on third down makes it easier for those guys on the sideline. They didn't have a fourth down decision to make. Yeah, could you feel the exhale? Because they were already thinking ahead as all the good coaching staffs do anticipating what we have to make the call. They already had it lined up, never even got to it. And the Ravens lead at 7-0. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. Tucker now out to kick this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Now this Bengals offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guys a little bit I don't, jumpy. But you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three now and out. have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. <laughs> Now the rookie from Oklahoma, it's Joe Mixon. And he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And now the starting lineup for the offense. And A.J. Green is an absolute playmaker on the perimeter for his team. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And here are the Raven defensive starters. Eric Weddle had a really impressive 2016 with the Baltimore Ravens. Still showed his ability to range deep in the secondary, as well as drop down in the box against the run. Rewarded with his fourth Pro Bowl after the season. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Out of the gun, it's Dalton. 
And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Here's Kevin Huber now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And the Ravens taking the field. And certainly they'll be hoping to hit pay dirt like they did on the last drive. Got the football back, so a chance to go up two scores. And they haven't been tentative at all in this ball game because sometimes you start a game with your script to try and get information out of the opposing defense. How will they play you in certain situations? Sometimes you script to attack, and that's what I'm seeing so far. They'll begin the drive with Collins. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. The insistence of speed at every position is really seen at the defensive end spot. These guys in the old days were often outside linebackers. They just pushed them forward because they wanted them to play fast and get to the quarterback or the running backs quicker than ever before. And not too much going there as he'll get it up to the 23-yard line. Give him two on that run, and they're still left looking at a third and about nine to go. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're not doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Flacco off play action. He's going to look deep for Perriman. And a shot taken on third down, unsuccessful. Fourth down now. How about this offense? Already feeling good about themselves with a touchdown already in their first drive? They've certainly come out firing, even though that one was incomplete. With the 7-0 lead, more apt to take a shot like that downfield? Hey, you're one to the good. Go ahead and try and press your advantage. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. Alex Erickson deep for Cincinnati. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. This is taken at the 15. They'll call that a punt of 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. And this is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. Dalton, first and 10. And this is going to be incomplete. Brandon LaFell, his intended target, and that'll bring up second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So second and ten here. <laughs> to throw again. Dalton. But he's got the hookup to Brandon LaFell. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. 23 yards on the play.
Now Dalton with a first and 10. And some room to put over. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Four yards on the pickup, and it's a second down. And they're six yards away from picking up the first here on second down. Operating from the gun. Dalton. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here he's the one that has to absorb the contact. And as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Now the Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third down. Could be a blitzer. From the gun, Dalton. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Here's Kevin Huber now as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. The Ravens offense now, they get set to head back on the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. They go play action here on first down. Finds his man, Watson, over the middle. And he'll lose yardage and be down at the seven-yard line. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though. Huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. And a long way to go for the offense here on second down. Operating off play action, Flacco. He's going to float this one deep right side. He's got a man complete. And he gets all the way down to the 30-yard line. A big play that time for the Ravens. 63 yards. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged, because now they know there are going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback, so they got their assignments down pat and kept them away from him, and he's able to step up in the pocket and fire one now for a really good strike. First and ten, and Flacco looking to throw, and it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 to the five yard line 25 yards the pick up there and also a first down and that's something that's been lacking in baltimore's running game the last few seasons the ability to really hit on a big run last year their longest run was just 41 yards all season four yards per carry near the bottom of the league
So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. On first and goal, Collins. And he'll get this one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through, and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. On the ground, this is Woodhead. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here, not even a thought, yeah, is it? defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. The offense on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. Now Flacco, and this is going to be incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So the drive takes him inside the 10, but it ends with just three. And a nice job defensively to rise up and make sure they didn't get in. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Bengals getting set to go. The results for them so far, not that great. Well... Not good at all. Three drives, three punts. Yeah, and now what you're doing is you're looking at your play sheet. You're trying to figure out what you're going against defensively. I wonder, are they showing them something they haven't seen or anticipated in practice, and maybe that's throwing them off? Or do they just have to go to a different play calling section and try and run some offense that way? They'll start here with a give to Mixon. Yeah, nice yardage right off the bat here as he's up to about the 24-yard line. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Six yards to go here on second down. Now, prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. 10-zip our score. We're back to Baltimore after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, and it's the Bengals with the football to begin quarter number two. They've got it second and six to start things out. Up 
operating from the gun. Dalton, and over the middle, it's LaFell. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A Bengal first down, Dalton hitting LaFell. to the right and holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play and that'll make this a second and 13. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Yeah, he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped. But I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. So second and eight here after the penalty. Now whistles and a flag, and I believe a Bengal got going a little early there. And that'll set him back five. Defense in a good spot. Let's see how the offense responds with a second and 13 now. From the gun, Dalton. Room here to run. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. to the short side left. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. taken down at the 44 yard line it's a pickup of 12 and that'll set up a third down partner it's a lot of fun watching the nfl now isn't it because when the big fellow runs routes it used to be when we were kids he'd run about three different routes and that was it now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there the offense on third down today 0 for three to this point they could use a conversion they're looking at third in the nose of the football Dalton now to pass. Open man is Uzama. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. 
Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. And Charles, this infraction is going to be against the offense. False start. Sometimes you have to get up to the line of scrimmage, make sure your team is set before you begin your cadence. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. It's Dalton on the screen, Bernard. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. The first down screen pass, good for five. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. Carry from Giovanni Bernard, and he'll get three down of the 34-yard line. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football, but these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense, and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Now whistles at a flag, and I believe a Bengal got going a little early there. That's going to set him back five yards. The Bengals on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and 11. Fakes the give to Bernard. Dalton. And that is incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. This will be from 56 yards out. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable. And really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And well, now he's looking just to add to his totals. So the missed 56 yarder and now the flip side. Good starting field position at the 46 near midfield. The drive starts with a run by Collins. Finds a seam inside the 40. 20, 10, and all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Alex Collins with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Ravens will extend their lead. And always a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice. And it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game moves on, just think about halftime. If, if that's is all he gets, he'll just sit there at the half and think, all right, two already. I can get some more. I can get some more. And he'll be encouraging his offensive line to create some space. He's got it, and it's 17 nothing. So 
So they hit pay dirt on just one play. The long run, the scamper, and a very nice scamper into the end zone for the touchdown. Tucker now out to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. Oh, looting the tackle. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. And for him, it's been pretty limited involvement down on the scoreboard. Maybe time to turn to this guy. And you know me well. Winning games to me means starting with the running game and continuing to press the running game. Maybe you go away from him a little bit now, but bottom line is he hasn't touched it enough to make a difference. Well, they haven't established that running game yet. The question is, will they? The drive will commence with a run by Mixon. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. When you're putting together a formula for winning defense, it's exactly what we're seeing in this game. Controlling the line of scrimmage, attacking, and changing everything so that now they're playing in the offense's backfield. They're playing an excellent game. It's second down. Don't look it. They'll set up the screen here to mix it. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. A good job defensively to hold that to four yards, and now it's third down. In order for a screen pass to break big, a lot of things have to come together and be well executed. But all it takes is one small thing to go wrong and keep it from being a big game. And the Bengals on third down. Just one for five to this point. This will be third and six. Here's Dalton. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. 12 yards that time and a Cincinnati first down. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And very little room to maneuver. He'll get this down to about the 39. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. Second down, Dalton. Now they go screen, it's complete. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. They'll wind up losing 11 on the play. And they're gonna face an uphill battle here on third and long. I really don't know where to go with this one. He caught the pass, but in the opposite direction towards his own end zone. That's not one you get every game. Bengals on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and 17. Now whistles at a flag, and I believe a Bengal got going a little early there. So that'll back him up five.
And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Operating from the gun, Dalton. And he goes out of bounds across the 40-yard line. They get a big amount back, 18 yards, but they'll still look at a fourth down now. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. Here's Kevin Huber now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Pressure comes and it's blocked. The Ravens block it. Now it's scooped up and this is a live football. And he will score. Touchdown, Baltimore. you well know every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block sometimes the guy just finds his way back there doesn't matter the play happens and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block for the extra point. And the lead is now 24. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. Here's A.J. Green as he gets set to go again on offense. Hasn't had his best day to this point here in the second quarter, and they're losing. you got to think, though, that also means that maybe the defense doing a good job on him. There's two sides to that coin. I would agree, so you have to give them credit, but that means you've got to find a way to beat that defense and make sure one of your top playmakers touches the football and has an impact on the game. Change formations, change where he lines up, put him in motion anything possible to shake him free. Maybe that greater impact comes here on this drive. Mixon gets the nod to start the drive, and the window closes quickly. He'll only get up to the 22-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down, and you know what offenses want? win first down so that can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. They'll stay on the ground. Mix it again. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. They'll lose a yard and it brings up third. With the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today, they've got to think about changing up their play calling. Some screens, some draws, some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game. You don't totally abandon it, but you try and give it a little bit of help. And the Bengals on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This is third and ten. From the gun, Dalton. He's got his man, Boyd. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. 
They give him a gain of 37. Nice completion there for Andy Dalton. Charles, you worked some of his games when he was at TCU. Now you've worked his games in the NFL. What progression have you seen? I've seen a guy who took over as a freshman in college and got better and better each year. Always added a little bit more to his game, gets stronger. But the best part about him is he's always been accurate. And now whistles here and a flag down. Looked like someone got going a little early. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. So after the mistake by the offense, it cost him five yards, and now first and 15. Now Dalton, over the middle complete, that's Carter. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. A good pickup after the penalty, 12 yards, and it's second down. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, and when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Dalton with a give here to Mixon. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. We just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game. Really at the point of attack, the offensive line is just getting pushed around. I think now as a play caller, you got to give them a little bit of help. Maybe keep your tight ends a little bit more. Maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking. But you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to Baltimore after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will have the highlights and analysis of this first half from our studios in Orlando. And I have a fairly solid idea about which team will be featured prominently in those highlights. <laughs> Might be a little bias. Now the Bengals on third down. They've converted three times in eight chances. This is third and four. Dalton here from the gun. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash, this from 53. And his kick is good. Oh, he just did tuck it into the bottom of that left corner. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. A little bit of a lower trajectory there on the deep kick, and it worked. Had to do it because he had to drive it out low because of the length of the kick. Able to do that, got it above the defense and over the post. After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll get this just up past the 20, but a marker is down. Let's get the call. Holding, receiving team. Well, that holding call set him up with not great field position. Not at all when you tack on the penalty. With that field position after the return wasn't terrific, it's not a great starting field position as well.
Very tough spot here for the offense to start. They look to throw on first and ten with Flacco. And Watson has it right side. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Second down of the offense needing five yards. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. A look over the middle, and he's got Perriman. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. That catch good for five. It's third down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles. To now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. And now the Bengal defense here calling a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup and get set as we resume action. Here's Sam Cook now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Returnable here from the 38. A big kick, 50 yards that time with a return of four. And that will come the offense as they take over. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. He's just been looking for some space. I'm not going to pin it on him or the offensive line, but they need to get this run game going better. Sometimes you just have to credit the defense. They came in with a plan themselves. So I think now you try and mix things up a little bit. Get the ball in the hands of some other people. Find some other playmakers. But always let the defense believe that he's still a threat. I was going to say, don't forget about it. No, don't take him totally out of the game. A first down throw coming for Dalton. And the grab by Croft. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Second down now after the pass completion. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. And the Bengals on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This is third and four. Out of the gun. It's Dalton. He's going to sling this deep. Dip. That's caught inside the 20. And all way in for a Cincinnati score. Tyler Boyd, 52 yards. And the Bengals are able to draw a bit closer. Well, that touchdown certainly helps, but they've got to go ahead and convert, get to the half, and figure out how to keep chopping down this lead in the second, don't they? Yeah, they still need to regroup, and they still need to end the second quarter strong. A little bit of time left.
On for the point after is Randy Bullock. And this is up and good. That'll make it a score now of 24 to 10. Scoring summary, three play drive, and it ends with a Bengals score. Bullock out now to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. The Ravens offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead. But a mistake there, that could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. First down run with Collins. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 14-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Well, with the kind of half he's had, I think we can forgive him that run, right? Not every run's going to be a big play, is it? No, and also the blocking just wasn't there. No room to run. Yeah, defensively, they got to find a way to build on that because he's eating them alive in the first half. Collins and this will go as a short gain on what will be the final act of this first half so we're at halftime here in the Inner Harbor with the hometown Ravens on top as we'll send you down to Orlando where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports halftime report Larry thanks Brandon and welcome to our EA halftime report I'm Larry Ridley. The Ravens are up right now and are looking to keep up the pressure moving forward. The Bengals didn't play their best, and they'll need to be at their best now to come back. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Ravens have it midway through one. Collins is going to duck out to the left, and he caps off the eight-play drive for the touchdown as they take a 7-0 lead. Now first and 10, Collins going to head outside to the right, and he'll go in from 54 yards out. Ravens push the lead to 17. Bengals come out on third and fourth. Boyd's wide open down the field. And this two-play drive goes for a touchdown. All right, Larry, these two teams back out there as we get set and ready for this second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. 
Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive. Is it, I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? A give right to Collins. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Well, at least he was able to break that initial contact or it could have been a loss. Yeah, give credit to the defensive player, though. What did he do? Made him slow down, slow up his feet, and allowed the rest of the guys to get there to finish him off. Ten yards still left on second down. Now it's Flacco. And this is incomplete. You know, every time we talk with people about the most important quality for a quarterback to have in the NFL, what do they usually cite? Arm strength. Yeah, and that's really way down on the list. Accuracy is one of the bigger ones, maybe the foremost one. That's what he needed on that play. The Ravens on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and ten. From the gun, Flacco out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Call it a three-yard gain, and that's going to make it fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. We'll call that a 47-yard punt, a return of just three. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> now a play fake here on first down. Looking left sideline, incomplete. The tight end, C.J. Uzama, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Well, Charles, we've talked about controversial rules a lot this year, but in that Cowboys-Raiders game, Derek Carr going in to try to win the game, fumbled through the end zone. Of course, that's a touchback. The other team gets it. Is that a rule that you like? What do you think? Um, listen, I'm actually for the rule staying as it is. And for Derek Carr, the unfortunate part was when he fumbled the football, right, pylon is the problem. Because yeah. when you hit the pylon now and you don't have control of the ball, now you're through the end zone. If he fumbles the ball doesn't hit the pylon, it's out of bounds at that spot. And it's, if you have downs left, it's still your football. So it's risk-reward just bad luck in some cases about where the ball actually ends up and what it hits on its way out. So I don't want to reward the offense anymore and give him extra opportunities. Ball comes out of his hands, hits the pylon, reward the defense. You have to cause a fumble. Yeah, it was just such a big week with the ruling catch-no-catch, -no -catch, Pittsburgh, New England, and that play. And that was a big game for both of those teams. It certainly was. You talk about week 15 of the NFL season in 2017, you're exactly right. We'll look back at a couple of rulings that may have altered some teams' opportunities to make the playoffs. We're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off.
Here's Kevin Huber now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. So a change of possession here on the punt. Getting set to go again as we look at the back heading out of the field again. And there are the numbers. Got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day. Not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half. But let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on our side of the ball. They went into halftime, made a few adjustments. And you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how their ability to play. Because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half, it gets ugly in the second half. They've come out with a new resolve and a renewed determination. They go play action here on first down. He's going to air one out. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he's going to be ripped down by the face mask at the end of this, and that's going to add 15 more onto the end of this thing. Tack on 15 more for the face mask, and that becomes a huge play. Big pass gets caught on you. You're doing everything possible to get him on the ground, and sometimes you end up grabbing the face mask. Fakes the give, sets to throw, and down inside the 15, shy of the 10. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end, curling in the middle of the field, so it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterback, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Flacco from the gun. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. A give, left side to Collins. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. The Ravens on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This will be third and six. To pass, Flacco. And that is incomplete. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion. Force him into going for three and not giving up six. So on fourth down, Flacco off to the sidelines. He gives way to Justin Tucker. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And that will extend their lead even further. So he splits the uprights there, and I would imagine it's nice as a kicker. Right when it leaves your foot, you know it's good. Yeah, it's kind of like a golfer that picks up his tee after a nice drive without even watching it land. Solid analogy. I like it.
Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he is knocked down from the side at the 17-yard line. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. And he'll lose yardage here. Back to the 15. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. If these guys are going to chop into that deficit, they got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage will be found. Again, it's Mixon. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. Call it no gain there, and now they're looking at a third and 13. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Dalton sets up play action. He's going to wind up and air it out. And that one goes incomplete on the drop. That's one he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. An attempt at a deep ball there. They didn't get it. But, boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent-sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. Now Campanero. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the Ravens, they'll take over. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point the kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Bash, <laughs> Super toe. Throwing here on first down. Flacco under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Jordan Evans in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. Yeah, blink of an eye. That happened fast and a big sack. Try the right side with Collins. Looking for an opening, not much there. He'll get it to the 39. Call it a three-yard gain, but they'll be forced into a third and 15 coming up. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game, and while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. The Ravens on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This will be third and 15. 
Now Flacco. Looking for Macklin, and it's intercepted. William Jackson with a pick, and they will take over possession of the football at their 42-yard line. But they needed a break. They needed to make a play here in the third quarter. Defensively, they did that. Now they got to go quickly and get some points on the board. And the best part is that they made their own break. Taking the ball away. Now they just look at their offense and saying, guys, let's go. Come on, capitalize on this one. The Bengal offense now gets set to head back out onto the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked so well. Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. And the movement there coming from the middle of the line. And you understand he wants to get off the ball quickly, but the ball's right in front of him. He has to watch it move first. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Four yards on the pickup. It'll be second down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Second down and just one. Now they'll run the option to the short side left. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. That one will go for nine yards and a first down on the keeper. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with a defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Operating from the gun, Dalton. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Throwing again. Dalton toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Tyler Croft, the tight end, the one he was looking for, and it's third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Third down, a shot here for Dalton. And that will be incomplete as well. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And this won't get there, won't be online either. It's no good, off to the right, and this score will stay right where it is. 
So another long try for three and another kick that comes up lacking. Yeah, this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage, but you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm -hmm. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Well, now they'll start three yards shy of midfield after that long 57-yard miss. Here's Collins. And he might have got this across midfield, not by much. They'll mark it down at the 49. A gain of three, second down. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Now it's second and seven. Play action, Flacco. That's caught out left by Perriman. And he takes this down deep into Cincinnati territory. That one goes for 36 yards. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield. Those guys made that play possible. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. A red zone first down for Flacco. His pass caught at the four. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. On second down, Flacco to throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Vincent Ray in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. The Ravens on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and seven. They fake the handoff. Now Flacco to pass. And it's caught. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. First and goal here from the two. Here's Flacco. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. For Sean Perriman, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Ravens will add on to their lead. And this is what coaches talk about, never being satisfied. No matter what the lead, always trying to increase it. You never know what can happen in this NFL. Tucker now to add the point after. And the lead is now 24.
That time, a six-play drive, and it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Neutral zone infraction, defense. They'll step off the five yards. Yeah, partner, you know. Defensive end, he wants to get into the offensive backfield. He wants that get off to be as fast as possible. A little too quick on that one. Dalton. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. Well, hey, with this window, two teams that we've been talking about this year that really deserve discussion and more discussion as we continue to go. How about the Rams and the Jags and the turnarounds that they've had this year? They have been dramatic. They've been dominating at times when you look at how they play. I mean, we just saw the Rams, was it, week 15? Went to Seattle and decimated the Seahawks to really take over the NFC West. The Jaguars have steadily gotten better throughout the season. I, I mean, in preseason, the Rams weren't thought of as a team that would make this dramatic a turnaround. Jaguars, they were kind of that trendy, could they be? But they have been for a number of years. This has been something else, and, and my hat is off to both of these organizations. Now they run with Mixon. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave them with a fourth down. That was a terrific job by the defense stopping them on third and short. But sometimes you get some visual cues from the offense because when they're going in short yard situations, you might see the offensive line come in tighter together, a little more shoulder to shoulder, trying to wedge a hole in the middle. They didn't get it done on that play. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. And tough starting field position here. Yeah. 
They run with Collins. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be hard to move people in this situation. You know they're going to bring the pressure defensively. Because I remember playing in these spots, and my coaches always say, don't be afraid to try and create a safety, too. They're going to bring pressure. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. Collins on the handoff, and he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. A six-yard pickup on the ground that time, and that'll make it third and four coming up. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The Ravens on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is third and four. Operating up play action. Flacco. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. A third down. He tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, and that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. It's taken to the 26. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. First and ten, here's Andy Dalton. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Carter. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. It doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, they move, and they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary, and I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. Now Dalton with a first and ten. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for his favorite target, A.J. Green, that time. And it's second down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Passing again, Dalton on second and ten. Seven yards on the play, and that'll bring up a third down.
getting on the draw to Mixon. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. First and ten. And an alley to run. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and very short. Defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. And now to the air, Dalton. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. The storm windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. They'll try and pick it up by running the action to the right. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. He'll wind up getting two there as he does it himself and picks up the first. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Dalton gives to Bernard. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. the give to Bernard Dalton and they're going to get to him a sack sack back at the nine yard line Zadarius Smith able to run him down for a loss of a yard well they go play fake the problem is nobody was faked out <laughs> and when no one's faked out what's the end result sorted back it's hit <laughs> This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. And Dalton to throw. And that's complete to LaFell. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And that's understanding where the markers are because it's not just running to them. Because on the catch, you could actually be pushed back before the first down. He's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. And the offense readies for play number 10 of this series. Hey, hey, hey. 
Here's a run with Mixon. And he pushes forward but comes up short of the goal line as he'll get a yard down to about the one. Every team we ever talk to that continues to run the ball in the game, even when they haven't had much success, all talks about attrition, don't they? If you keep running it, eventually good things are likely to happen. It's been a hard go in this game today, hasn't it? Yeah, this defense, they met pretty much every challenge in front of them this afternoon. They're still trying to run the ball, but they're not finding much space. They'll run it now out of the gun. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. He lost two there, and it's third down. This linebacking core, they've done a good job of keeping that running game in check, haven't they? They certainly have, and what they'll also do when this game is over is thank the guys up front, the big defensive line, because they've kept them clean, so to speak, not letting blockers get to them, allowing them to run to the football and keep that running game bottled up. they got to have six here. It's third and goal. Nixon. And I don't think he got there. No, they stop him right where it all started. No gain on the play that time. So a big stop, but it's going to leave him with a fourth and goal. Now this feels like old school football because this has turned into a good old-fashioned goal line stand. So on offense, what do you do now? Do you decide to run it or throw it if you go for it on fourth down? A field goal does you no good, so they're going to stay out there and go for it on fourth. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And it is incomplete. They're turned away on fourth and goal. And the Ravens come up big down at their own goal line. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. And not great starting field position here for the offense. Now a give to Collins. Showed some flash on the run, but he will be brought down shy of his 10. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. On second down, Collins. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Call that a loss of five yards on the play. And they're going to have a third down. Brandon, this is clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. The Ravens on third down. They're hitting at just 30 percent, three for ten. This is third and nine. Here's Woodhead. And this one will be taken up. They'll spot it right at the seven. It'll be a gain of four, but it won't be enough. It leaves them with a fourth down now. Well, the guys who are paid to make the tackles deserve some kudos there, but I think they deserve even bigger ones because in that situation, they had to be thinking pass. Loosened up defense, going to pass coverage. Instead, maybe they surprised them a little bit running the ball, yet they rallied to it and stopped them well short of a first down. Here's Sam Cook now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Taking it about the 36. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. And out now, here come the Bengals. And last time, they had it fourth and goal, rolled the dice, didn't get it. Now they've got to put that behind and try to put together another drive. 
A simple tip of the cap, a nod of the head to the defense. Congratulations, you got us last time. But you didn't hold us the whole time. We got down to position. We were able to be in position to score. Let's go ahead and attack again. Continue to have that kind of confidence. Not worry about the one play that didn't allow them to get into the end zone. And this time they'll be trying to get it into the end zone. We'll see what they do. First and ten for Dalton. Trying to get it to LaFell, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Tony Jefferson. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent. And now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. come the Ravens. They built up that lead at intermission and they're just continuing to pour it on right now, aren't they? Locked into a really good groove right now. I don't know if it's just the play calling. I know the execution is really, really sharp right now and all the playmakers are doing exactly what you expect. They're making plays and right now defense has no answer and no chance of catching up. Now they're just looking to turn anywhere for a stop defensively. Now Collins, and very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. The Ravens on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This will be third and six. Now it's Woodhead. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. Time for a break. This one, all over but the shouting. We'll finish it after this. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Now Justin Tucker. He has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. This will be from 56 yards out. And he's going to miss this one. Wide to the left from distance. It's no good, and this score will stay right where it is. So an empty possession there. What do you think went wrong, Charles? Well, it looked like maybe the plant leg might have given way just a little. And when that happens, guys have a tendency to pull through the ball to compensate. And in doing so, set this one off target. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in the game like this, and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. 
But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Second and ten, Dalton once more. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. That's a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works on that all the time. I was going to say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong. He's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later. But I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work out a little bit more. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Here's Kevin Huber now as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. The kicks away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. They have the big lead here late. They protected their home turf well, didn't they? They certainly did, partner. And just think about how good that feels because every team has a goal when they start the year to win at home. All right, and sometimes you don't win all of them, but they managed to get that done today. Just think about your routine stays the same. Everything's familiar. You feel right going into the game, and they translated that into a win. They did indeed. They protected the home field, and now the final stages. They'll begin the drive with Collins, and he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. They go again with Collins. And he's got room. And he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain. And it's third and two now. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. Third down now following the run. They'll try to run for it with Collins. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. I've got an idea. Let's skip racing to the airport at the end of this game. Let's go to the post-game press conference. I have a feeling that the quarterback of this winning team is going to be giving a whole lot of credit to the running game and the offensive line. Yeah, I was just going to say the offensive line, yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. So it'll be first down here after the run. They run with Woodhead. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory.
That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Ravens are victorious here as we say so long from Baltimore.